Hey everyone, I'm joined by David Cantor of Real World Tech. David does some very technical analysis. So some of you have asked websites that I read, generally his and, uh, and things like that. So David, we're going to talk about CUDA cores and whether or not the words I just used are words that should be used. Yeah. CUDA cores. <laughs> yeah. So what, uh, as we, we've talked before, I've mentioned this before on camera, but you and I have talked about whether or not the phrase CUDA cores is accurate to what it is. Right. So let's, let's start at the top level. Before that, this video is brought to you by Corsair's new Dark Core RGB SE mouse. The Dark Core RGB SE is a wireless gaming mouse rated for up to 24 hours of continuous wireless gaming with the LEDs enabled and can be coupled with a Qi charging mouse pad for easy battery charging. It has both wireless and Bluetooth antenna, so the mouse can be used easily on two systems and switched between them. Learn more at the link in the description below. What is a CUDA core as NVIDIA defines it, and then why, yep. why does your definition differ? Yeah. You know, they wanted to highlight that they had a really parallel architecture, more parallel than a CPU, which is fair. Uh, the challenge is, uh, being marketing guys, and I think AMD got tied up in this originally as well, as they used to talk about the stream processors. Right. And, you know, in my world, a core has a very specific definition. And so to me, a core is something that can fetch instructions, can decode the instructions, you know, go ahead and read them, uh, execute them. And so that'll mean, you know, getting data from a register file, from a cache, whatever it is you know, computing your results, storing it back to the register file. Right. And, you know, for me to be really comfortable with it, I like for it to be able to store it back, you know, not just to the register file, but to a cache, but sometimes that's optional. You know, but the point is, if you want to do any computing, you got to fundamentally get in some instructions, get in some data, crunch them together, and get something out. And so the catch is, when you look at GPUs, you know, what they call a core to a CPU guy is a floating point unit, right? right. And, and it can it can absolutely crunch numbers, but it can't fetch instructions, and it can't decode the instructions, and it certainly can't really access memory in and of itself. Um, so that that's sort of the, the technical angle. Mm -hmm. um, the other angle is that actually, if you look at how GPUs are built, and there's a, some great talks on this. I, I gave a talk at UC Davis about GPU architecture and CPUs. Mm -hmm. Under the hood, the execution units in, say, AVX 512, you know, Skylake Server or, or, or uh, Skylake X, right. it's actually not too far away from a GPU. There, there's a lot of differences, but they're wide vector execution. And so that's why if you ever talk to someone about how to program in CUDA or uh, like ray tracing, one of the things right. that was remarkable about ray tracing, and this is something we talked about, is when you're bouncing your rays all over the place, you know, the light bounces off your face, but some rays go there and some rays go there. And so then you end up with needing to do operations differently on those. So you can't actually stick them in the same, uh, what NVIDIA calls a warp. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if all you have are those two rays, you know, now each needs its own warp and it's just sitting there by itself and you're mostly underutilized. In that hierarchy, what NVIDIA calls an SM may, be equivalent to a core. Okay. Right. And now on the graphics side, they tend to group them together in groups of four, right. is my recollection. Yeah. But, you yeah, know, when. So I, simultaneous multiprocessor for SMs, right. and those contain their CUDA cores as they yep. define them, uh, TMUs, things like that. Right. And so, you know, your texture mapping unit, you know, I mean, every GPU has those Intel right. GPUs, ARM GPUs, whatever, you know, and, and but that's. You know, if you think about that as the load store pipeline, that's a really good analogy, right? Because a lot of the data that we're going to be running through right. in graphics is textures. So, to me, the way I think about it is, you know, look at the V100, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the biggest, baddest NVIDIA GPU. Actually, just straight up the biggest, baddest GPU you can yeah. get all around, <laughs> if you can afford it. Right. And uh, that has about 80 cores. And within each core, there's multiple uh, execution and units. In this case, cores being SMs, I guess. Right. right. And so if you think about that and try to map it to, say, a Xeon, mm. like Skylake, Skylake, you have up to 28 cores. Each core has two floating point multiply accumulate pipelines that uh -huh. can be 512 bits wide each. And so when you sort of 
plop them into Excel and do a line item to line item right. comparison, it kind of becomes clear that you know what NVIDIA calls a CUDA core really is just a single lane of a vector execution unit. Okay. And you know NVIDIA can call it what they want to, but I. Uh, it's not a true core, though. Right. You yeah. know, when someone says, oh, we've got, you know, 8,000 CUDA cores or 5,000 yeah. CUDA cores, I mean, that's great. But, you know, if you do, did the math for, for Intel or AMD, you'd come up with similarly, you know, impressive numbers. Right. Yeah. And, well, and to that point, marketing drives a lot of that, I think. Because, yeah, like totally. you said, you can have 3584 cores. That sounds pretty impressive. Except it's CUDA cores. So. Right, exactly. And, and and so I just prefer people to be, uh, you know, intellectually honest. But, you know, again, <laughs> when it comes to marketing, everyone's guilty. Right, 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 um, right. You know, another way to look at it is if there's any OpenCL programmers out there, uh, they have some very great reference terminology mm -hmm. for, uh, you know, things like data elements that make it clear across different hardware architectures what you're talking about right and in a consistent manner and so if you look at that you know again how does a uh, stream processor play into this then yeah so i mean you know amd's stream processors same thing as a cuda core right um and you know if you were to talk to a cpu guy you'd say this is a a, a lane of a vector execution unit okay um right and so you know skylake uh server so then ultimately if uh and we we actually get this question somewhat frequently mm -hmm. What's the difference between a stream processor and a CUDA core? Yeah. Ultimately, it sounds like they're both lanes of a vector execution unit. That's right. Right. And, and you know, I think in the context that both companies use it, mm -hmm. you're doing a, a 32-bit floating point multiply accumulate, mm -hmm. and so if you were to think about that, that's just you know one lane of a uh, you know the AVX 512 right. units. It's very similar. Now that the, there are some differences in that you know obviously you can do different operations mm -hmm. in CUDA core. We should in uh, we should define a uh, multiply accumulate for people too. Oh, yeah. So there's different <laughs> different types of instructions and processing, yep. right? Add, multiply, all that stuff. Yeah. So multiply accumulate, I think is the one you just referenced. Yep. So what what is that and then what's an example of something using or doing yeah. that? So uh, you know the the most common math operations we all know from you know third grade mm -hmm. is as you said add and multiply. And in a lot of workloads, we tend to want to do them together. And so, uh, for example, if you have a dot product, mm -hmm. you will be multiplying A times B and then added to it C times right. D. And so, com many computer architects have realized this is you know sort of a very core building block operation. So let's just stick them together into one operation that's a multiply accumulate. Right. And so. You know, where is it used? It's sort of the fundamental building block of graphics. So anytime you're rendering a frame, you know, it's you're mostly multiply accumulates. Mm -hmm. um, there's obviously a lot of other things that go on. So examples, I guess, of when you're doing math in a GPU, just to give yeah. a, a really hard example, would be maybe something like a delta color compression or something like that. Is that an example that would be accurate? No. Because there you're comparing two values, but... Right, you would probably be, well, so the delta color compression, at least in the AMD mm -hmm. GPUs, that's, I think, handled mostly in hardware. Okay. But, like, a better example would be, uh, so if, you know, say we're going to take this video and we want to rotate it, uh -huh. that's actually, there's a, a matrix that will represent the rotation. Right. You know, whether it's 45 degrees or 90 degrees. And so you would take, you know, all of the pixels that is us and then, you know, Transform it. Yes, using your transformation matrix. And so when you do any sort of matrix operation, mm. you know, whether it's zooming in, zooming out, rotating, scaling, right. uh, et cetera, that's all going to be using multiply accumulates. Now, for those who are maybe a little bit more into machine learning, uh, which is probably not your core audience, but you know, it, NVIDIA but, did have some pretty cool they, demos at GTC of like AI right. and other things. And the core audience can't escape it even if they want to. Anyway, yeah. So. Well, the, it, it, right. It's gonna, machine learning is probably figuring out the ads to show our core audience, right? right? Yeah, right. So, you know, a very common thing that you'll do is you will have uh, in a, just a very basic neural network. Mm -hmm you'll be taking maybe like a thousand inputs in and have weights for all of them saying right. you know which one is more or less important 
and then you multiply each input by the weights, and you sum them all together to figure out if the neuron's going to fire. So that, again, maps right back to a multiply accumulate. Right. Um, you know, a lot of uh, image filtering. Mm -hmm. So if you, you know, when you hear people talking about doing anti-aliasing in shaders, you right. know, compute anti-aliasing, temporal anti-aliasing, a lot of that is going to involve running multiply accumulates mm -hmm. nonstop. Right. And so that's one of the reasons why GPUs are such compute powerhouses is because they focus a tremendous amount on doing the multiply accumulates. Whereas right. if I'm designing, you know, the Zen core or Skylake, I really need to be able to handle SQL mm. and uh, all sorts of things that are, you know, much more random code that's branchy, not as much math, more cache access. Right. And so, you know, that kind of gets back to like, well, fundamentally what's different about a GPU. And one of the big things is where do you, where do you focus your optimization? Where do you spend your area? Where do you spend your power? And what is the common case? Yeah, that makes sense. So, uh, a lot of marketing for the yeah. base answer. <clears throat> and then we've got stream processors, CUDA cores, Course, at the yep. very heart of it are not too different, That's technically right. speaking, right? Yeah. Uh, the difference in how they organize those units, I guess, in terms of uh, SMs mm -hmm. versus CUs is a little different, very at least different. on paper. Yeah. So. So we talk about that then, an SM versus a CU. Yeah. Uh, with a CU, you're, you have still, you have the process, the stream processors. Yep. You have some form of texture map unit still, mm -hmm. and uh, ACEs, hardware schedulers, things like that. Well, now are the, AC, the, the ACEs are yeah, that's at a higher level right. of uh, of the hierarchy, mm -hmm. and so the the ACEs, those will take in. Uh, commands, whether mm -hmm. DirectX commands or compute shader commands, right. and then turn that into actual things that can run on the GPU, your, your, your shaders. And mm -hmm. so then that gets farmed out to the shader cores, to the uh, GCN cores, the right. SMMs, right. and then they execute there. You know, I think when you're looking at sort of the more micro level of mm -hmm. the differences, uh, you know, for example, NVIDIA puts the tensor cores right. in, and so that's, you know, a hardware block that does a four by four matrix multiplication. Mm -hmm. And so, Which, as a side, complete side note, may have implications for ray tracing as well. Right, and so that's something that you know I think you were looking into, and we have been talking right. about, where um, you know it's used actually not for the the core of the ray tracing, mm. but uh, modern ray tracing algorithms are too computationally expensive right. to cast many rays. And so if you look at like a high end movie, you know a Pixar movie, you might have hundreds or thousands of yeah, rays. Yeah, really per dense pixel. data. Yeah. Right. Whereas, you know, if we want to do this in real time, we've got, say, 16 milliseconds. Yeah. You know, so you we get maybe a couple rays. Trace two to four rays. Yeah, right? exactly. And then throw some denoising on it. Right. And so the denoising is where you're going to run those, those CUDA cores. Because, right. again, matrix multiplies, multiply accumulates. Mm. Um, and then, you know, I think one of the things, you know, many people know that uh, AMD GPUs uh, are, are better for, for mining. Right. And part of that is the building blocks that AMD put in their stream processor cores. They have more uh, bit manipulation and hashing capabilities. Okay. You know, so you do have differences there. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, at a high level, you know, your 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 GCN core, your your SMM, right. very similar. And then you know, you you pop up a level, and they both have command processors right, that will. Yeah take in DirectX or OpenCL or OpenGL, and then cough out, you know, graphics shaders. That'd be the, uh, NVIDIA calls that, I guess, is it GCP or? The Google, th there's, there's graphics. a Giga Thread scheduler. Yeah. You know, and so anyways, I mean, but it's, you know, it's sort of the command processor, right, yeah, is yeah. one way to graphics think about it. command processor is what I'm thinking of, because I, yeah. think, I think that's what they define as the collection of SMs before, that's right. before it zooms out another level to whatever's above that. Yeah. Yeah, and so that would be, yeah, you're, you'll have command processors up in there. Right, right. Um, you know, and of course, you know, to, to bring it back to CPUs, you know, in CPUs, we don't really have command processors, right? The, it, in some sense, the command processor is the processor when it's right. running the OS. And right. that's, that's another one of the very, uh, you know, big architectural differences is that, the scheduling capabilities for the GPU are in hardware mm -hmm. and generally tend to be a little bit more fixed right. than uh, 
you know, in a CPU. Yeah, yeah, and, that makes sense. And those those lines are blurring over time. But, um, you know, yeah, there was one thing I was going to mention, which is, you know, again, you know, to me, I look at this and say, uh, yeah, CUDA cores, stream multi stream processors, you know, it's all a floating point unit. Right. But, you know, you do get these blurred lines when people do interesting architectures. And so uh, AMD's bulldozer, they had these conjoined cores yeah. where if you go back to my definition, you might say that bulldozer doesn't really mean it because you had, you know, sort of two cores, but... The Are you talking about where... So there was a bulldozer module, right? Right. And then that had, was it Shared? two integer units and one FPU or something? Right. Well, and not just that, but I think more importantly, you only had one fetch unit, mm -hmm. one instruction cache, one decoder. And so you'd alternate between the two. Right. And so, you know, they said, well, okay, this is kind of like multi-threading, which is true. Um, but, but if your you multi-threading is, is FP intensive though, then it's a problem. Right. Yeah. But I guess the point is it's, it's sort of one of these shades of gray arguments is, is, is a bulldozer module two cores or is it one? If you're right. really, really strict. You know, you might say, oh, well, you only have one instruction fetch unit, so sure. it's only one. But, you know, I think realistically, it is something where it's important to recognize that, you know, the world doesn't conform to nice, clean lines right. all the time. Uh, you know, instruction fetching, for example, in a GPU is often shared between multiple mm -hmm. cores. And that's fine. So, uh, you know. There's a full spectrum out there from, you know, on one end you've got, you know, your CUDA core, which is just a floating point unit, to, right. you know, your bulldozer core, which you know, is missing some of the elements of a core, to, you know, your big Skylake core, which is, you know, everyone looks at that and that's definitely that's a core. That's a hard definition of a core. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, it's uh, a little bit, uh, th there are degrees of freedom. Right, right. Well, so there's your answer of what is a CUDA core or what it isn't. Yes. <laughs> Depending on how you look at it. Yeah. And uh, we'll do a link in the description below for an article. You can go to patreon.com slash gamers to help us out directly. And D David, thank you for joining. My pleasure. Good to see you. You too. I'll put a link to his site as well. You should definitely check it out. Real World Tech.